Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Geek Heart Games podcast. I am Sam Suvak alongside Cody Tietrich. Cody, how you doing? Doing pretty good. Having a good day. Uh, That's good. I realize I've been really negative lately. Like, so today I was like, I'm going to be positive. So yeah. I was complimenting some coworkers at work and I was, you know, just in a good mood, listening to my music, dancing a little bit at work, you know, yeah. as you do. Uh, so yeah, I'm having That's a good day, nice. actually. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. I am so glad that you're having a good day. Um, How's your day going? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Cody. Uh, it's not going great just now. Um, <laughs> if you're watching the video, you'll probably see at various times that I'll just make these real awful faces. And uh, it's just because I've, I've got some stomach issues going on right now. There's been a debate about uh, possible food poisoning. I don't know. I'm not feeling great right now. Um, but we're going to power through and hope for the best. So you just start hearing a retching noise. Just Sam. I'll try Can't to, realize. I'll try to mute my microphone if I have to run to the toilet real quick. But that's dedication. You know, you're here, even though you want to possibly <laughs> vomit and or something else. Um, so <laughs> dedication. Yeah, man. Hey, I am geek heart to my heart core something that no that not on it i'm here okay. i'm not on it but i'm doing the best that i can cody so probably <laughs> let's jump right in why don't you start us off uh tell me what you've been doing this week so let's start with a little bit of sad news a little bit uh so technically today was supposed to be my talking about the Pokemon Go Mewtwo raid, but uh, it's been raining here in Louisiana lately. I didn't want to drive an hour and a half out there just for no one to show up because it's raining. Um, but to fill in that Pokemon void that would have been there, I've been playing a ton of Pokemon Y because I wanted to go back and finish Gen 6 and 7. Um, okay, so, so I'm sorry. Like It should have been rare... I feel like you should have said something Pokemon, and I've been why, and you've been like no why because it's gonna be like why no, and we could go back and forth. <laughs> um, but again, I'm not on it, so we totally missed that opportunity. Um, All right. But yeah, please continue with more talk about Pokemon. <laughs> um. So when I bought my 2DS back in 2014, uh, this is a game that came on it, so I was like, okay, uh, I've played. I think I'm actually now at the point where I usually end up quitting, where I'm just like, I'm not having fun with this. Uh, so I'm actually, Why? I've gotten that far in A. Nice. Um, so you get your first badge, and then it is a long time before you get to your second badge. Because, like, there's all this, like, storyline stuff they really want to get in there right away, and it's just like, oh, okay, all right. Um, so I did all that, and so I'm here, and, like, usually... Usually I try to, like, make a team throughout the game, but, like, I'm very early on into the game, and I've already got all six Pokemon that I want as, like, my final team. So there's that. Um, Got to have that Bulbasaur. So I'm happy about that one. Uh, I'm actually enjoying it more. I know a couple weeks ago I said I wasn't really having fun, but I kind of got through that the story stuff I've seen like three times now before mm -hmm. I end up quitting. Uh, so now I'm actually getting onto some new stuff. So that's really cool. Uh, and like, it's kind of nice to not have to worry about like, Oh, like what Pokemon am I going to catch next? Like, I don't got to worry about that. Cause I have my team set. So there's that. Uh, and so I'm really excited to finish this one and get on to the next one. Cause like, I kind of want to finish these before let's go Pikachu and Eevee come out. Because that'll take over my life. Because I'm really excited for that game to come out. It's going to look amazing. <laughs> yeah, so playing Pokemon. That, that's Pokemon three weeks in a row. So maybe next week I won't That'll talk about That'll be the it. last. Or this is finishing it off. Say say the last that you need to say about Pokemon. Because it's going to um, be another couple months before we allow Pokemon on the show again. Oh, good point. Okay. So if you're like, Cody, you are a grown-ass man. Why do you love Pokemon so much? Fair question. Uh, it reminds me of my childhood in simpler times. And 
these cute little awesome Pokemon are simply amazing. Like, <laughs> Bulbasaur is legitimately one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. I have a Magikarp that I'm evolving to a Gyarados. And everything else I've gotten so far in that game has been really cool. Uh, so yeah, Pokemon's just something that, like, brings me back to, like, when I was a kid. And yeah. sometimes you need that, because, like, you know, the world is dark and scary, and, you know, having something that keeps you cool is really awesome. And it'll That's fight what Pokemon for you. Is for me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You're right there. There's some faces made during that segment. I was yeah. So yeah. words for you. I'm I'm trying to be real quiet. Sometimes there's some burping happening, and I hope that it's not audible. I'm trying to keep it real quiet over here. I think you're good. So, okay, I apologize if you guys hear things. I mean, I'll, what can you do? So, um, okay. So a couple weeks ago, I think we mentioned there's a game called Speedrunners. Because I was like, oh, there's mm -hmm. this game we were going to get when it was on sale. And then we both forgot to get it because we're so As dedicated, we you know. <laughs> um, so I went to go look it up and it turns out it's only $10. So it's not that bad. But if it was on sale, it must have been like five bucks or something. So we really missed out. Um, but it does have a free demo on PS4. So you know how I love free things. So I downloaded it to give it a go. Um, and basically, it's um, really simple graphics. And there are four players, they're all on the screen at the same time, and you're kind of navigating through this map, like it's a race, but it's like a 2D platformer where you kind of just like go around and like loop around and do stuff. Um, and you've got, you just run, you've got like a double jump, you've got a grapple that you can use on certain surfaces for ceilings you can grapple onto. Also, if you're real tricky, you can grapple onto other players, like if they're ahead of you and you can like get them at just the right point, you grapple them and it pulls them back and you get a little boost ahead of them, which is pretty cool. I never mastered that during my time with the demo. I did get grappled and pulled back a few times and I was just playing AI against AI, but uh, pissed me off. So you can do that. There are these, um, they look kind of like big blocks of ice. But like when you run past them, you can get a boost. And so then you can boost yourself and go faster. And I think while you're boosting, you can go through obstacles. Because like normally there's like crates and stuff that you have to jump over. And mm -hmm. if you run into them, it slows you down. But if you've got your boost active, then you just kind of run through them and it's no problem. Uh, and then you can pick up items, which I had some. I wasn't real clear on what they did. And also after the first time or two that I used one... I did not ever remember how to use them again, so I would pick them up and see that I had them, but I wouldn't, I'd be pushing all these buttons and I couldn't get it to use it. And then there's this random button, which I think is R1, where you push it and your guy just like stands still and does a little dance for a second, which is not what you want to be doing while you're yeah, trying to run so. a race. Like, why does this button even exist, you know? So that, <laughs> that was weird. When yeah. you're super ahead, you when can you're just super bust ahead. Out a, yeah. a, a dance move. Yeah, and and so it's pretty cool. Like I said, you're all four on the screen together. So whoever's in the lead, their goal is to get far enough ahead that other people are kind of just slowly knocked off the map. Because as the camera pans, if you're not caught up, you get uh, kicked out. Um, and that's how you win, to be the last one standing. And then if you play long enough, um, it starts shrinking the game screen so like before it would be full screen and then it'll just like start slowly getting smaller and smaller until there's like very little screen left so that way it's easier to get someone kicked out if you can get ahead of them um but it is just it's so simple but it's a lot of fun cody you were you were right on with this one um i think we should get it at some point maybe we'll wait for it to go on sale again it doesn't matter uh but you should get the demo and try it because it's just one of those games like Games are fun if their movement is fun, it seems like, yeah. you know, and this one, you're just like zipping around there and having a real good time. And that's that's what makes it fun. So I, I definitely recommend it. Um, I think it's just, you know, four players at once, but it'd be a really fun game if we could get a, a group together and, uh, and yeah, play that. I think so. it, this seems like one of those games where you end up all yelling at each other, <laughs> calling <laughs> each other names because it's yeah. frustrating. To lose. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> game uh we'll pick it up when it's on sale yeah 
All right, what else, Cody? Uh, so, back during Summer Games Done Quick, the final game they ended up playing was Final Fantasy VI. Um, now, no, I did not play Final Fantasy VI, just for the record. Um, but I've heard a lot of people compare this next game to it, and that is Octopath Traveler. Uh, so people have been raving about this game, uh, <laughs> some good, some bad. Uh, and so it is a JRPG where you can pick from eight travelers and then you do their story and eventually you meet up with the other eight or other seven, I guess, because there's only eight. Uh, so I played the demo on Nintendo Switch and I picked the Claire starter, daughter, 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 uh, Ophelia. Um, Music and scenery in this game is amazing. Like the music was really amazing. I loved so, I loved it so much. Like I was like I caught myself like stopping and just listening to it. And I'm like, oh wait, I only have three hours. Let's, let's get back to do it, doing this. Um, I thought the character of Ophelia had a great backstory. The getting into a point where I could finally go out and like walk around and do combat took a little long for me yeah um it was like 40 minutes in before i got to go do anything and maybe i was just moving really slowly at times so that could be like a little bit out uh extreme uh but like the story they were setting up was really cool so for ophelia um you are the adopted daughter of this cleric and her i guess he's like a priest doesn't yeah, because Ophelia is the cleric, like, character okay. name. Um, and so you're the adopted daughter, and y'all are part of this religion where someone has to go and deliver this sacred flame to people, and it's going to be the priest's actual daughter who's going to go do it, but then the priest becomes sick. What's up? Is that a euphemism? Deliver the sacred flame? You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, I don't think so, because these people are super religious. Well, you don't know what kind um, of religion they've got. Good point. This is some fantasy world. <laughs> uh, the priest becomes sick after this mysterious man meets with him. So you're kind of like, oh, okay, some stuff going on what here. What were they right, doing? Right. Uh, okay, you were making this way too sexual. Like, bring it down like 20 notches, okay? Okay, right. sorry. And so the real daughter is just so heartbroken over it and like wants to spend, be with her dad, but she knows she has to go on this journey. So Ophelia's like, you know what? I got this. I'm going to go out there and do this. And I'm like, that's a really cool storyline yeah. to follow. Um, I still have like an hour-ish left on my, my three-hour demo. I don't think I'll pick this game up because it is a 100-hour JRPG with like so many different endings and stuff. And like, But I will like agree with these people who have been like singing his phrases like it's really amazing music and visually it's really cool i've heard great things about other character storylines uh i just picked ophelia's on a whim like i was like oh this one sounds cool uh but i've heard great things about primrose mm -hmm. who's like a dancer that goes undercover does like some spy work that's really cool um and the cool thing about the three-hour demo is if you buy the full game you carry over yeah. everything you've done in the three-hour demo. So that's really awesome. Um, so yeah, if you're at all interested in huge, long JRPGs, definitely play that because it'll last you a very long time. Uh, just not for me right now. Uh, maybe maybe one day. Yeah, I, I played the first demo that came out, which was a shorter demo. Uh, and I played Primrose's story, which her stuff is pretty cool because she has this special ability where she can dance and mesmerize people and then get them to like follow around and fight for her. Um, but this was before I got into my where I was okay with turn based combat in games. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't like super thrilled with it. Also, I mean, I know people really like the art style, but it's not my favorite art style. It's some of those that that older bit <laughs> of some sort style. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know. I might do try the new demo a little bit more and just because well, you know I like demos, so like why not? Yeah, but I'm it's I free, can, so like yeah. it's worth a shot. It's awesome that it's a three-hour demo. Um, yeah, but I can I can almost guarantee you that I'm I'm not gonna pay sixty dollars and buy this game. But <laughs> you know, but after hearing you rave about the music, I'm excited to hear the soundtrack. 
So yes, I'm, I'm definitely will be listening to the soundtrack. It's it's really amazing. Speaking of amazing soundtracks, um, Persona Five has a pretty amazing soundtrack. Um, I played this quite a while ago, for a while, um, and I got to a point where I was like, you know, I don't know, whatever, it's fine, it's kind of repetitive, I'm, I don't necessarily care about the story too much, and so I just kind of stepped away from it for a while, um, but then lately, I've had the soundtrack stuck in my head, I'm like, man, I kind of want to play that again, and then I was in this state where, like, my hands were kind of hurting, like, I didn't really want to play a really involved game. I wanted something really pretty simple where I could just kind of sit there and be like, whatever. So I was like, you know, let me let me play some more Persona 5. And like, I got it out and like, I was, I'm apparently at 40 hours. Yeah, go ahead. Why are your hands hurting, Sam? Wink, wink. <laughs> well, All right, I wish it were You're for... being super sexual, so continue with your story. Unfortunately, it's not for any fun reason. It's just from oh, okay. playing too many video games. <laughs> um, but, uh, Okay, so yeah, so I have like 40 hours into this game. Um, oh, damn. I know. So, I mean, it's like 100 hours as well, but I'm like, ooh, I'm close to close to halfway. Um, so I started playing it again, and there's just something so relaxing about this game. The soundtrack is so good, and like, it's almost like a, a Pavlov reaction to it. Like when you go into battle or you beat a battle, the different music cues that come in for it, and it just makes you feel so good and you just want to like keep going to get to hear it again. Um, and then it's just, it's simple managing your day-to-day -day activities. Uh, like you don't have to think about things too much. You just kind of sit there and like listen to the story as they're talking about stuff and figuring it out. And then like you decide what you want to go do. Like I'm working really hard right now to try to get my charm up because I don't think I can date anybody until I get my charm up. Um, although oh. I also might have to get my kindness up, which I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know. That's way too much of you at that point. I know, because like, I've been so concerned about getting my knowledge up. Like That's the stat that's like the highest. Because I'm like, I don't want to fail my exams. I want to get so smart. So that's what I've been focusing on the most. But now I need to like focus on some other stuff. Um, one of the things that I am disappointed in is, like, you can only romance female characters. Because obviously you're playing as a male character. And I'm just like, why can't I why can't I romance one of the male characters if I wanted to? Um, but it doesn't seem to be an option. So, um, Have you Googled that? I feel like I've heard yeah. other. Okay. Hmm. I Googled it. Oh, I read and something. It said for Persona 5, all of the romance options were females. So... Hmm. So I don't know. If I'm wrong, I'd be happy to be wrong. Um, but uh, there's some other weird kind of like stuff. They were in this desert and ev everyone was like hot and sweaty and like passing out. And there were like two women in the back seat. I mean, in the front seat. And then the guys were all in the back seat. And then there's this scene where you just like see the guys like leering over the back seat, like staring at the women and their like sweaty boobs. And I was just like, well, and then... One of the ladies did, like, call him out and, like, yell at him for it. But I was just like, that's weird. And then there's this one guy who's, like, super... Good old Japan. I know, yeah. He's, like, super traditional. And they were going to this fireworks festival. And these two random girls came up and were like, hey, how are you guys? Blah, blah, blah. They're like, do you want to come hang out with us at the festival? And he's like, that is so inappropriate for your station. You should not be asking men to come hang out with you. And I was just like, what the fuck? It's very, very weird. weird. It's so weird. So it's just, it's always jarring when like little things like that happen that I just like, that just seem very foreign to me, obviously, because I'm not familiar with that culture. Um, but it's a little weird. So I'm having a good time. The, the battle stuff is pretty repetitive and kind of boring. So I don't know if I'll stick with it. I'll probably play for a little while and then quit. And then like six months later, maybe I'll come back and play some more. And maybe like that's how I'll get through the game. Uh, the only thing I really care about, I don't care too much about the story, but there is this cat called Morgana in the game. Is that the, like, almost mascot, pretty much? It's like a black and white cat? Yeah. It's, like, cartoony? Okay, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and so, I mean, everyone is clear that Morgana is a he, um, but, like, I feel like Morgana, Morgana, however they say it, and then... Morgana's code name is Mona, 
which also seems like a feminine name. And then the game does a thing where the voice actor who's playing this this character is a woman. And I'm like, if you were really having like a male character and you wanted a boyish voice, hire a young boy to do the voice, you know? Like, God of War did it with Atreus, and it sounded good. Uh, Because, like, for Rugrats, the voice of Tommy is a woman. I know, I know. I mean, traditionally, that happens all the time, but I don't necessarily approve of it. I'm like, why not just use an actual boy? I don't... I don't know. I think it's fine. I don't know. Well, it's given me, it's, it gives me concerns about this Morgana. And like, I, I want at the end of the game to find out that actually it it was a woman all the time. Um, I actually have this thing where I think it's this other character, Anne, she had this friend who tried to kill herself. And like, I think her mind has fractured and she was in love with Anne, but she wasn't ready to face it. So she's like manifested as this cat and thinks she's a he because that's how she explains her feelings of love for Anne. And I hope that all See, gets resolved I'd be like, at the end. Sam, you are off the deep end, but this is like an anime-based game, and yeah, like it's not happen. far-fetched. Like some crazy shit's going on in anime. So I don't know. But so right know. now, if that doesn't happen, I'm going to be super disappointed and feel like all of my time in this game was a waste. Um, but I have a strong suspicion that it's not going to happen. So. I don't know if that enti- like an entire game is a waste based on <laughs> that, but okay. <laughs> this damn cat is not actually some crazy person's other self. I know, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I guess I've got another. Actually, I'm about to... I'm at forty five to forty six hours now, so you know, I mean, I'll check back in another fifty hours and let you know if I figured anything out. But it's a long time. <laughs> it's a long God time. Bless you. Don't know if I'll get there, but that is fine. Um, but yeah, so then we both played a game that is a new free game on PS4. I don't know if it's on the other consoles, but uh, Cody, why don't you give us your first impressions of Defiance 2050? Yeah, so Defiance 2050. I remember you talking about the beta a while mm-hmm. back. Um, and I was bored. I was kind of looking for something to play. Uh kind of run through my usual rigmarole of games and i was like oh free to play shooter down for that uh i had never watched the show defiance it came on sci-fi correct um and is was there another defiance game or is this the old <laughs> defiance game that they just rebranded um Okay, first, I think the show might have been on Fox, not sci-fi, but it could have been on sci-fi. I don't remember. You asked me what was going on with the show, and I I did not remember much of it at all. It was quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, so there was a game that was on PS3 called Just yeah. Defiance, and it was That's based on the show as well. And when I was reading stuff, it seemed like a lot of this game is just like kind of a revamp of that one and making it better. Excuse me, but even though I play, I still have, I own the first one um, and I've played it, but let me tell you, I don't remember much of it at all. So I'd have to go back and actually play it again to see if I could even tell what was different and what was the same. See, I remember that game coming out and like Mm -hmm. people being like, oh, this is like revolutionary because like things would happen in the TV show and then that week, like that episode Mm -hmm. for that week things would happen in the video game based on that. So that was like, oh, damn, that's really cool. I guess that's interesting cool. to do it. Uh, the only issue was I, I read it, not a lot of people played it. So Yeah, I, don't, I didn't not play it for very long. Um, so to Defiance 2050, though, uh, so I want to say, like, the art style definitely reminds me of, like, Borderlands 1 without the cell shading. Uh, take that as you will, because we are on the PS4, so... Borderlands 1 was a while back. Um, it is a free-to-play game. so It's a free-to-play game. That's awesome. So that's, that's, that's it's that. Um, I think the shooting feels okay. Like It's not like Destiny level shooting, but it's it's about mid-tier, I feel. I feel like it has a pretty strong aim assist turned on from the get-go. So it's, yeah, like, it's a pretty... Yeah, I can see that. It it's, it's wants you to have a good time. So I definitely shot like 20 feet to the right of something <laughs> all with like whiz like i was like okay we're playing one and all of a sudden um so i guess it kind of just is like these aliens invaded and they've been invading for a while uh but now like people are starting to get mutated 
by like something with the aliens. So there, there's humans, and then there's two other races uh, yeah. of aliens, but they're friendly aliens, and everybody gets along pretty much. Um, but then something has happened to cause these mutations. I don't recall what it is. Yeah, I wasn't really catching it. Like, I, yeah. they they kept bringing it up, and I was like, I don't understand. We might learn um, more as the story goes along. Yeah. So, like, we, we played together, and we were going through it together, and we were just kind of doing, like, generic things. Like, oh, hey, go set up this radio tower mm -hmm. so we can help people. Oh, hey, go help these people mm -hmm. who are in danger. Um, I first clicked the Guardian class. Because I was like, oh, I like playing a tank. Like, I like being up in the business. Um, That's what she said. Yeah, okay. I was waiting for it. Uh, and so I figured the way, like, the classes in this game would work. It's like, okay, you get a special ability. But then also, like, you get certain weapons tied to you. Like, so this guy had a shotgun. I was like, that's fine. Uh, as I quickly found out, the shotgun is not the best for the opening tutorial mission. Because everything is shooting at you from very far away. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm going to go create a new character. Because I'm not sure of this. Um, that and, like, my class ability was a giant, like, shield wall. Not really giant. Like, it, like, covered me. And there was a window, which I could shoot out of. I was like, that's not... <laughs> that's not... I don't like that. So I switched to the... Uh, I think it's just the assault class. And mm -hmm. I got to sprint really fast. And I got an assault rifle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um... I kind of want to go see what the other classes special abilities was. Like, you picked the medic, mm -hmm. um, and you and got, I like, a it. healing drone. Yeah, it's a real cool little healing bot that pops out and takes yeah. care of us. It's nice. I think my favorite part is, so we were doing missions, and when you have to do a boss battle on the mission, it loads in other people mm -hmm. who are also on that mission with you. So, like, there's, like, a real teamwork kind of, like, thing. And, like, they, like, even, like, at the end, it's almost similar to, like, in Warframe, at the end of a mission, a card comes up and it tells you, like, this person did this percentage of the damage. This person did this much of the healing, and that came that comes up at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like me and you, like we're always in like the top like three. So I was like, that's really cool, like awesome. Uh, and so apparently, like the big thing for this game is there are gigantic, like massive public events similar mm -hmm. to Destiny. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to get to those. Um, I it's not really a complaint for me, but I was noticing like I was getting all these weapon drops. Yeah. And you weren't getting any. I forgot about that. That was, yeah, I didn't And get so I was shit. trying to figure out, like, because we were playing together in a party, is our loot shared? And was I just no. stealing everything? No. Um, well, and I think you waited. Yeah. I think you were like, hey, here's this right here. Come get it. And I was like, I don't, it's not showing up for me. Like, it's not there. So. Um, yeah. And so let me weird. just, let me just also clarify. You went and changed your class and started a new character. But then later we found out that you can go to your inventory and you have like all of the different starting weapons. You have an assault yeah. rifle, you have a shotgun, you have pistols, and you can switch through them as you as you wish. So um, if, you, if you're in a similar situation where you try a class and you're like, oh, I don't like this weapon, you don't have to go restart. You can just change your weapons later. Um, but yeah. And then there's something where you can either pay to unlock other classes or as you go along in game, like you have to really work for it, but you can unlock other classes as well. So you can have multiple classes that you could switch between, which is pretty yeah. cool. Um, I think this, tell me your opinions on it so far. Like, what did you, how did you feel? I liked it. I had a good time. Um, it's just like a fun, easy thing for, for yeah. people to get into and play together since it is free. Um, and like Byron and I played the beta and we did a lot of the public events and those are pretty cool. Cause like we just go to a spot and there'd be all these like insect like monsters spawning that we'd have oh. to like fight off. So like there's a lot of different, uh, characters, I mean, creature creation type things that we didn't see when we were playing. Um, but yeah, it just seems like, you know, it's just going to be a fun, laid back, easy thing to, to play. It's not... It's not going to be like a game of the year, but it's just, uh, yeah. you know. Also, we forgot to mention that there is like, you get like a four-wheeler and like, that's like your way of getting yeah. around places quickly. Um, really fun until you smack into something thinking it's, you're going to kill it, like by running <laughs> it over and then your four-wheeler explodes and you die. Yeah. Uh, as I found out. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah. It's definitely one of those games where like, you can just kind of like 
not tur- like almost turn your brain off and just yeah. kind of play yeah. and like you don't really have to like worry about anything killing you like we got downed a couple times but yeah. like we just got to like mm-hmm. revive yeah you can revive or, or you can like so i was so we had this thing where we had like three different objective points in this smaller area and we're like oh we'll split up and each go handle one and that was a horrible idea because i went over and i got to my area and it was just like so many enemies all over the place i was supposed to be reviving these ai characters that were there and it was just like a slaughter i was like i can't handle this so i got downed cody's over at his objective um but it's got this social thing that you can do where i was like oh let me just go to my teammate and so even though I was downed, it let me teleport over to where Cody was and then he could heal me from there. So I didn't have to just like hang out and wait for yeah. him to come get me. Um, also, I think like you get your f- the first time you go down, you can do a self revive. But then I think there's a pretty big cooldown on that. Um, and so if, yeah. you, if you go down again in that time, then you do have to have a, another human person come in and revive you. Um, but yeah, like, so something, I think there's something about one of the perks on the medic, like if I level it up enough or something, like I'd get extra cooldown or lower cooldown time on my self revives or stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So there are like some RPG mechanics where like each class kind of has a skill tree and Mm -hmm. like, so that's the, I guess the important part about like, you can swap between classes if you pay or level up. Yeah. Um, and so for the assault, like I noticed there was kind of like. You could do like a mix of things, but I noticed there was kind of two paths for like, if you went down one path, it was you were melee focused. So like I'd be like running in there and like punching people and like getting a damage boost. Um, or there was the path which like, here's all your cooldown reduction. Like your grenade is like a, on a five second cooldown. You get self revive back quicker, um, stuff like that. So there is like some RPG mechanics to it that I feel like people could invest in. So there's that. Um, also, there's some really cool skins that are available to purchase. Yeah. Um, like, some of them were kind of tempting for me. I'm like, man, I, I you know, it's always a, a thing where I'm like, man, do I really want to spend money on this free-to-play game? But then sometimes I, I really do, because, I mean, they made an effort to make a really cool game, so I should support them. Uh, but there's some real neat outfits. And they are, they have, like, a content, like, outline, like, what they're going to be adding, apparently. Because when I was looking up, like, there's, like, a deluxe edition quote unquote um and it has as the next two classes are engineer and paladin Mm. i want to say um and like paladin has like really badass looking armor so that's cool um so yeah they have like they seem like they're going to support this game as long as people play it and like Mm -hmm. it's a free game so like i'm sure it'll become popular really quickly um because like warframe is really popular neverwinter is like there's always people playing that so mm-hmm. yeah there's that and i think i got a free outfit from having participated in the beta yeah we went there and like i got one and cody didn't and so we decided that's probably what it was from but uh but yeah so it's cool you should definitely check it out um i think we might try to do a community night with it at some point which i don't know we're we're gonna, like four people in a party i think there's only four? Okay, I was curious. I wasn't sure how high you can go. But I think the cool thing about this game is, like, I think we could split off and we could have two parties of four, and, like, if we were just in the same vicinity, we'd still be, like, you know, doing the missions yeah, together. Yeah, this year because... it can't be, like, yeah. one hub world. Yeah. Because I saw you running around. So well, I mean, I'm sure they've got multiple, a... but, like, we could start, like, we could join up together, me and you, at first, so we're together, and then we could split out and then get our parties to us, and then we'd still all be in the same place. So, yeah, yeah it'd be pretty cool. So definitely check it out. So, all right, Cody, do you know what it's time for? Um, is it time for tea and crumpets? Um, you know, some nice tea might help settle my stomach. Um, but I have neither tea nor crumpets. So instead, let's talk about. I was, are you a cold tea person or a hot tea person, or are you a both? I'm a neither, really, but I'll drink hot tea when I need to. You don't like tea at all? Not really. I mean, Cody, wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I don't like much besides water. So... You I, are one strange human being. Continue yeah, with whatever you're going on to. Uh, I was going to talk about some esports, okay? Okay, go for it. So, 
man, a, a lot has happened since we last spoke. Um, we kind of record at an odd time where we have the first match of, of some some playoffs and then more matches happen. And uh, I had to issue a, an apology retraction statement last week because, you know, we'd said some pretty negative things about the London Spitfire's chances. And then, we talked oh, some shit. boy, yeah. they, they yeah. came back. They kicked some ass. Um, so, <laughs> wow. Okay. Let me tell you. So, first off, Cody, um, did you know that uh, a lot of the players on various teams – have started bringing brooms with them to the arena? No. Yeah. I, yeah. I did not. Because they are just all about sweeping. Because um, we've had... I f- you, the fucking second I thought about it. Oh, my God. Continue. <laughs> there have been so many sweeps in in these playoffs so far. So um, the biggest surprise was... Uh, so... In the quarterfinals, it was LA. He still got his head down. He can't believe I made that horrible joke. Um, <laughs> so the quarterfinals, we had the LA Gladiators versus the London Spitfire. So the first match, Gladiators swept London, and they're like, "Yeah, that's why we said what we said." Then, all right, Cody, you're frozen with this smile on your face. I'm gonna see if I can mimic it. Like this will be our screenshot. I don't know. But it's fine. It's fine. Um, can you still hear me, Cody? Okay, I feel like Cody cannot still hear me, so this is this is a problem. Um, let me let me text Cody real quick. Cody, 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 I can't hear you. Oh dear, he's left. Okay, I think he's coming back. Okay, what what happened? Well, you froze, and so I tried to mimic the face that you were making while you were frozen. So I was thinking maybe I'd use that as a screenshot. But okay. All right. All right. We're back. We're back. Um, Let's see here. Okay. So I was saying uh, Gladiators swept London that first match, and then London came back and swept the next two matches to defeat LA, and it was just, like, resounding. So... I think one of the things that's influencing it is the change in the meta that's happened recently. And like, cause yes. you know, they made the changes to Hanzo, but I was, I was a little confused about all this because at first I thought that they just went ahead and switched and they brought Hammond into the mix. Cody, do you know why? Why? Cause London came in like a wrecking ball and they fucking wrecked the LA Gladiators. Okay, that was it. I told you I had two really dumb jokes to make. Those are my two dumb jokes. Oh I'm done my now. god. <laughs> okay. Okay. <Save> All right. <laughs> so that was exciting. So then we had the semis that have started. So far, we've only had the first round of matches for the semis. So we had the Philly Fusion versus New York XL, and of course. New York XL is like the number one team in the league. And like everyone was pretty much expecting them to just, you know, kick ass. Uh, But Philly came in and they swept New York in their first match, which is just like mind boggling. Um, I was so excited about that. Poor Aloy. She was really frisky that night. And then like, I'm just over here starting screaming and clapping and she thought she was getting in trouble. I'm like, no, it's not you. It's it's about Overwatch. It's okay. But yeah, so that happened, and then after that, uh, the London Spitfire played LA Valiant, and this one was like a little mirror mirror. I think the London won the first map, and then it was a draw, and then London came back and won the next two maps. Um, But yeah, it's it's been crazy, Cody, and I I feel like. So New York and L.A., because they were the top two seeds, they got to skip the quarterfinal matches. And, like, I guess you would think, oh, yeah, that's cool. They don't have to mess with all of that. But, like, after seeing what happened, okay, granted, this is only the first match of the semi. So by the time this comes out, the rest of the matches will have happened and they will have a winner for that. But um, at this point, it's just like they're 
the, t- the two teams who didn't play in the quarterfinals did not very well. Um, and it seems like, you know, the teams that were in the quarterfinals, they had time to practice and maybe get in the mindset of, of being in the fight. And then also they had the mindset of we just won the quarterfinals. And so going into that might give them a little bit more confidence than someone who's just coming straight in playing their first matches now. I don't know. So it's like it's hard to say if it really is a good thing to get to skip the quarterfinals or not. I don't know. But the really exciting thing is just like there's no telling what might happen because everybody is playing so good and I'm just like super excited to see what happens. I really hope Philly makes it to the finals. Um, Obviously, if you're listening to this, you'll already know if they have or not because it'll have passed. But uh, but I'm super excited and cannot wait to see what happens. So. Cody, did you have anything else to say about esports? Um, so I'm hoping with season two of Overwatch League, they get to a point where they can be. Because here's my issue: is that we're technically one patch behind. Because like the Hanzo mm-hmm. patch has been out for a while, yeah. and like we just got the Symmetra rework. Um, so I'm kind of like hoping that in season two they just stay patch and patch with each other, mm-hmm. um, like stay in sync, because like I feel like it's just very weird to like mm-hmm. not to see these like because they're about to do a huge like nerf slash buff to a bunch of support characters. Mm-hmm. Like Anna's about to get a buff where like when she nano boosts it heals her 300. Yeah, that's amazing. Like that's a very important change and like. If we were technically a few weeks further, like the grand final could be being played on this Symmetra patch. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hammond and like these supports have all got buffs and stuff. Um, so I feel like it just would, and like it's got to be confusing for some people who are just tuning in, who are like casually play Overwatch and they're like, well, why, like, why is no one playing like new Symmetra? Like, new Symmetra is yeah. really strong. Like, so I kind of hope they can do that. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to the grand finals. Like, I'm definitely yeah. going to be watching for those. Uh, yes so yeah. this comes out on monday so the weekend after this comes out july 27th and 28th that's when the finals will be so you should definitely tune in to watch those if you're at all interested in overwatch because it's going to be some fantastic gameplay i'm sure yeah. also fun fact if you have a pc and you've never played overwatch they're having a free weekend so that's july oh, okay. 26th through I didn't remember the end date, but I'm assuming it's Sunday. So um, you should get in there and play. Um, if you're looking for a buddy, I, I also have Overwatch on PC. So send us a message and I'll get on and play with you if you if you want to. So, uh, But it should be a lot of fun. So I like that they're doing a, a free weekend at the time of the Grand Finals because it's a good timing to try to like suck people in. Be like, oh, you like what you're seeing? Well, why don't you come play it yourself? I think I just spit a little <laughs> bit. I'm so sorry. That was... <laughs> I'm blaming it on the stomach, not on my excitement for Overwatch League. <laughs> All right. All right, Cody, do you want to start us off with some news? There's some exciting news. Kind of bittersweet, yeah. maybe, I guess. Yeah, it's it's whatever. Um, so, uh, for, uh, Gun and Ilphonic announced that Friday the 13th is getting a Ultimate Slasher Edition and Ultimate Slasher Collector's Edition. Um, and there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Uh, so with the Ultimate Slasher Edition, you're going to get the game, all the DLC, which includes three kill packs for Jason, and then all the costume and emote packs for the counselors. And then you also get a poster based off characters in the game featuring the Part 8 Jason. That was a really cool poster. I'm going to be getting this one. Um, but if like you're like, well, what if I want a little something extra extra? You can get the Ultimate Slasher Collector's Edition. It includes all that plus a replica part three mask. I actually have the mask. You probably have seen it on numerous podcasts. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's, that was really cool. Like it's almost like a last hurrah. Cause like they can't add any content. Um, so this is like, kind of like, Hey, this is what we're doing. Let's get this stuff out there. Um, you could tell like, cause they also did a giveaway this past week for Friday 13th um, where they were giving out like, five posters like they have all these posters printed out so you could tell they like have some stuff like that they want to get rid of almost yeah um 
so yeah, like I'm really, I'm really, I'm excited for this because like I, I really want the poster. I think the poster is really awesome. Um, and then I'm gonna get some DLC that I don't have currently, and yeah. still support the people that made a game that I love. So when you're a collector, and, uh, you like to collect things, so that makes sense. Yeah, for you. yeah. and maybe, and it comes out in September, so maybe in September something will happen around that. It's a little, <laughs> maybe little wink at the camera there. You know what I'm saying? That looks creepy. Yeah, yeah. That is super creepy wink. Stop it. I can't wink at that eye for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, can Anyways. You? Yeah, you can do this one. It's fine. I don't know. That's weird. It's fine. All right. But yeah. Well, I'll mess up my contacts with too much winking. So. All right. Next up on the news docket, we have got... Oh, so um, this week we had the Nathan Drake fan film come out with starring Nathan Fillion as Nathan Drake. Um <laughs> It was uh, super impressive as far as production quality. Uh, I mean, they're not, no one was, what? Why are you making that face? Okay. There was one scene where I was like, this looks very, like, fake, but. Okay, but it opens with, like, obviously it was, like, some big drone shot over this landscape and, like, going in. It's like, they had. They they invested quite a bit of money into making this thing, and I mean they're not getting anything for it, and that's it's yeah. not to make money. It was just because yeah, no, they love like this. It's really awesome. Like it was really cool, and like I had fun watching it. Just like there was one shot where I was like, "Ooh, y'all could have like reshot this a little bit better." What was the shot? It's only um, fifteen minutes, so you can go watch yeah, it. It's only fifteen minutes, guys. So, so definitely no take deal. time, pause, go watch it. Uh, after he escapes the house and he's running to Sully's car, like there's a thing where Slow he like turns punch. around and like it's just before the punch. Okay. Where he's like he's he's supposed to be running, but it looks like he's like just kind of like fast jogging like this. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Nathan Fillion, come on. Oh, um, now that this is really cool, uh, I was like sitting there, like he starts talking, and I was like, why is his voice so familiar? And I'm like. Oh wait, this is Kate Six. No oh. duh. Um, <laughs> so I, was, I I couldn't get past that. I was just like, man, Kate Six is a human. It's just very strange. Have um, you not realized that that's who Kate Six was previously? No, I have. It's just like just the voice yeah. is like because okay. I've I think I've always said I've never played an Uncharted game. I've actually played the first game okay. and I've like gotten halfway through the second game. So I don't know why I've never been like, yeah, I have played Uncharted games. Um, so. I don't know. Like, I guess I was just like, oh, this is Nathan Drake. <laughs> but I'm hearing Kate Six's voice. I'm so weirded out. Um, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was really cool. Like, just, yeah. I like these kind of things. Because, like, um, a couple of years back, uh, Thomas Jane made a Punisher fan film because, like, he obviously wanted to play the Punisher again after his movie. Um, and I really liked that one. Like, it had, like, Ron Perlman in it and stuff. And, like, it's cool when these, like, high profile actors just do something for the fun of it, even though they yeah. know they won't get anything out of it so and it's just cool that they don't get sued for doing it you know because i mean yeah not, not everyone could get away with doing this even if they weren't Good trying point. to get money for it so yeah. obviously they had somebody's blessing to to go ahead and release this so that was cool um but yeah i mean he nathan fillion makes a great nathan drake he portrays him very well he's got that that whatever attitude that that nathan drake yeah. has um, this is pretty cool. I feel like if you're a big fan of Uncharted, you would really like it. I also am not like a huge Uncharted fan. Um, and I'm just like, man, eh, you know, it's cool. I think it's, it's nice that it's, uh, just like a little 15 minute movie. If it were like yeah. a full length thing, I'd probably go see it just because it's a video game movie, but I don't know if I'd be like, I, I'd see it. Cause like Nathan Fillion's great. So I'm sure he would win me over with it. But like part of the yeah. reason why I haven't played um, I played the first Uncharted, but I haven't played any more. It's just that thing where, like, like I'm spoiled now, and I want to play as lady protagonists, and, like, just having another guy who's that, you know, that typical kind of happy-go-lucky, like, everything happens for him just the way he needs. He's cocky. He's cocksure. He's just like, you know, I'm like, yeah, that's fine, but uh, not super appealing to me right now. But it was a fun film, and... There's like the fun connection because Nathan Drake in the games is played by Nolan North. And then as you just said, Nathan Fillion plays Cade Six in Destiny. 
but he's not able to play Cade 6 for the Forsaken expansion that's coming out. So Nolan North is going to be voicing Cade 6. Um, so they just kind of like switched roles a little bit here. And it's, it's pretty funny. It's like, I don't know. Just the weird way yeah. stuff happens. Um, I saw a thing and it was, uh, there's that like meme where it's like the two Spider-Men pointing at each other. And one one said like, Kate six and one said ghost because no one north also voices <laughs> yeah. a ghost so it's just yeah. be like hey wait a minute here um so yeah uh, yeah it's really, really cool like and like i think uh no one north did tweet at nathan fillion like hey great job like you really nailed this so that was really cool that's to cool see. that's cool yeah um yeah i'm like blown away by nolan north's voice talents um because like i knew him as ghost first but then, like, I've heard him talk in real life. There's a gnat or something in here. So I've heard him talk in real life, and then he hearing that he's Nathan Drake, it just sounds so different. And I'm like, how does this man make the ghost he voice? Like, it doesn't even, like, I can't process it in my head. It's so different. So um, hopefully he'll be able to do Kate Six Justice as well, because, I mean, I so. he can do things with that voice. I don't know. So. Um, all right. What do we have next? Oh, wait, we should have segued this better when you talked about your little Spider-Man meme. But uh, also, they just dropped a new trailer for the Spider-Man game. And this is a um, story-focused trailer. So, Cody, you just watched it. Do you want to sum up for us? Yeah, so um, this is kind of giving us a little bit more like insight into what's going on in the universe of the Spider-Man Uh this kind of seems like a more like age Spider-Man where like mm -hmm. he's been at this for a while because like in the thing, um, I don't know who the guy he's talking to is, but it's some kind of character you're going to have like interactions with. And it seems like a little bit of altercations with where like, he's like, you're a menace. Like you, you shouldn't be doing this anymore. Like you're the reason New York is, uh, was that like, uh, not Harry Osborn, Norman Osborn? When I saw, I can't. I couldn't tell. I couldn't like tell. he never said his name, but like he I just. Felt like he he doesn't could look be... like any... he. Yeah, he does kind of look like he could be Norman. Yeah. Um. And so, like this, this trailer introduces like Sil uh, Silver Sable and a task force that is like trying to protect New York, but also like trying to stop Spider Man because like. Oh, I didn't. They don't like. I didn't understand that they were trying to protect New York. I thought they were just straight up bad guys, also, and he was trying to fight no. them as bad guys. Uh, they're like a mercenary task force. Okay. From what I can get it. Um, and you kind of see where like Miles and Mary Jane play into the story, um, because like Peter recognizes like, hey, there's all these souped up like my old bat, all, all my old villains are mm -hmm. souped up now. Like someone gave them advanced tech. I need like a support system here. So this is like a kind of aged Spider-Man who's recognizing like he needs help. So like he's listening to help of Mary Jane and Miles Morales, which is cool. Well, and I thought it was interesting because apparently Mary Jane knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. I think because there was something. Yeah, it seems she... like a lot of people do because the scene where he walks into that dude who is possibly Norman Osborn, he just has the mask off and like it's holding it in his hand. Oh. And the dude's like Peter Parker, and I'm like, whoa. Apparently, uh, I need to watch this trailer again. I missed that part, but uh, uh, but it didn't seem like Miles knew who he was because Miles was like, "Do you have a cell phone? Have me contact you." Like, I don't know that he knows it's Peter. Maybe because he had the mask on when he was talking to Miles. Did he? Okay, I thought he had the mask off at first and then he put it on as he was getting ready to leave. I Couldn't really tell. need to watch um, this trailer again. Apparently, apparently, <laughs> I'm, apparently I took better notes. Um, so I think it's just cool. Like, it's kind of giving us more insight of what's going on without giving away too much. Uh. I think it's cool, like, Silver Sable's there. Like, it's another iconic Spider-Man character. Um, that's, like, someone I know from, like, the animated series yeah. interacting with Peter. Um, they're still, like, making sure, like, hey, you guys don't know who this last big bad guy is. Um, yeah. Which I don't know we talked about on here. Uh, the So they have a collector's edition for Spider-Man coming out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Apparently the statue is a huge spoiler. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey don't uncover the statue until you beat the game because it is going to reveal who the final villain is. So be on the lookout for that. If some, if you see a statue, 
don't avert your that. eyes. Yeah. Um, I think it's also really cool that today, they did that. I don't think yeah. I don't think the secret's gonna last, but I think it's a really cool thing so. to do. So. Um, also today they announced the PS4 Pro bundle oh. with this like really nice PS4 Pro. It's got the uh, it's a glossy red mm -hmm. PS4 Pro with the Spider-Man logo from the game, the big white spider, like almost the Venom logo, almost kind of um just on it and the controller is like the plating is uh red but then like the sticks and the buttons are all white and looks really clean yeah. like if i was in the market for a ps4 pro i'd definitely be getting this so if <laughs> old old bessie over there bites the dust you may see a nice shiny ps4 pro in cody's house um I'm so excited for this game. Like, I think it's going to be amazing. Like, everybody, like, after E3, everyone who talked about it was like, this is Marvel's equivalent to the Arkham games. And I love the Arkham games. So I'm I'm all in for Spider-Man. And this trailer, like, really, just, you know, hyped me up a little bit more. Like, we're not that far. We're like a month-ish away. A month and then, like, month and two weeks. Because yeah. it's like the first week of yeah. September, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm really excited for it. What about you, Sam? Yeah, I, I liked it. I thought... I always like it when a trailer like gets me in my heartstrings and makes me like, oh, I'm excited for it. And this one got that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was a moment that just like really tugged on me. And I was like, oh, goodness. Um, so I'm excited about it. I'm excited that Miles seems to be uh, a prominent part of this because like yeah. the first trailer we saw at like last year's E3, I think, it was just like... Uh, like at the very end, it was just a little clip that showed him like in a crowd looking at Spider-Man being awesome. And we were like, maybe it's just like a little Easter egg. Maybe it's not going to be anything. But to actually see him now, he's going to be interacting with Spider-Man. He's going to be doing stuff. I mean, go ahead. You know, you say that. And I remember because at the end of that clip, he's like, come on, Peter. So, yeah, he does know who Peter oh, is. Oh, does he? Oh, so, okay. And I'm pretty sure he is when they show him and Mary Jane talking to Peter peter doesn't have the mask on so oh, okay. i think a couple people know that yeah. like he's spider-man in this universe yeah. so that's cool and that's that's you know true to the comics people know so yeah. um so yeah i think i don't know if it would happen but it'd be kind of cool if there were like little sections of the game where maybe you get to play as mary jane and miles for different little side things or something Cause sometimes games let you play as other characters just for yeah and like there was a scene in this trailer where Mary Jane is like having to sneak around and it maybe that's your character. Yeah. Play, like you playing yeah. as Mary Jane. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And I mean, it'd be cool yeah. if Miles gets bit by a spider during this game at some point. Also. Oh, there is a scene in this trailer that freaked me the fuck out the spider. Um, <laughs> because Mary Jane is like walking through like some lab <laughs> And there's a sp like a spider in a cage, and the spider jumps against the cage. Boy, let me tell you, I kind of like shook back for a second. So, <laughs> fucking spiders, man. Fucking spiders. God damn. Cody, I was going to tell you, so the guy who sits next to me at work told me just the other day, uh, apparently they've just, they have a tarantula that they've adopted now because like... They had a friend who works at a, yeah, you know, at a pet store. Yeah, the thing you just adopt. Yeah, well, because somebody ordered this tarantula and then, like, they decided not to buy it. And so the store was like, well, we don't want to keep it, so we're just going to give it away. Does somebody want this? And so he was like, sure, I guess I'll take a tarantula. So now he has a tarantula at his house. So I thought you'd like if that. He, if he doesn't show up one day, you know what happened to him. That tarantula got out. Tarantulas are, are not pretty bad spiders. Well, they're they're yeah. pretty cool to hang out with, so... Um, I have, did I tell you that I, I've had a tarantula like walking on my face before? Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! All right. Well, hey, I'm in search of a new podcast co-host. Um, you can email me. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> gotten better about spiders actually. There's a spider very close to me today at work, and I was completely okay. Yeah. Normally, I would fucking like light the box on fire then there, mm -hmm. but I did not. So. Well, hey, that was supposed to be because you're having a good day. You're, like, pretty lenient on spiders when you're feeling good, so. Good That's point. Lucky for that spider, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we have time for at least one question. Possibly two? What do you think? Um, 
Yeah, let's do two. Let's do two. You know, we'll do okay. Let's get people with them. Um, Mike said one that's really long, so let's skip that one and we'll save that for next week, just because that's a lot to read. Reason. So we'll do the two shorter questions, and Mike will get to yours next time. Um, so first, Meg's wrote in, and she said, "What game will be better if you added another character from a different game?" And Cody, I believe, because we've had this one in the hopper for a while. And at first, I didn't have an answer. And so you gave me an answer that I could use, which I've forgotten that one, which it's okay because I thought of my own answer. But so you had a couple of answers that we could have gone with. Um. Yeah, so like, I mean, hey, easy one here. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate be a lot better if fucking Waluigi would. Because God damn it. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, so game, that'd be better. Another character for another series was in it. I gotta go with what if uh, stick with me here. So Mortal Kombat pretty edgy right? Like just blood, gore fatalities, brutalities All right. I guess. Now what if you put Spongebob Squarepants into Mortal Kombat and he soaked and up all like, the blood? exactly like let's get this down to a pg rating like let's let's make mortal kombat kid friendly again okay that's all i'm saying like i'm just kidding uh yeah now i'm gonna go with wild easy and super smash Bros. ultimate because uh that's the heart wants what the heart wants you know i mean i'm surprised your answer isn't just waluigi in every game ever that's i mean that is also true i'd be down for that um I I still can't believe they they did that to my boy. Like how how dare? How Do you dare think maybe it's just like they're just fucking with people and like when it comes out he's gonna be there and be like, oh, we were just messing with our boy. He's he's there of course. I, at this point, here's the issue: is that some people took this a little too seriously and were like sending death threats to the maker of Smash Brothers. Not cool. Um, which don't ever fucking do that. It's very wrong. These people work very hard on these things. Just because one character's not in it, does not mean you just freak out? I'm putting on a show when I freak out about Waluigi not being in something. Um, I feel like they would add him as a DLC character at this point, just so people leave him the hell alone. Yeah. Um, I just wish this wasn't the way it had to go. Uh, so yeah, what, what, is, what is your answer to this question? Okay. Um, so the original Life is Strange game, you know, I've said that it wasn't quite my favorite Max is not my favorite character. I feel like she's kind of dull, pretty wishy-washy. She doesn't have a strong personality. So I decided what I would what would make that game a lot better, or at least more lively, would be if we brought Akarsha over from Butterfly Soup. Now, you wouldn't be familiar with this because you still haven't played Butterfly Soup, right? So it's, not yet. it's fine. Um, so Akarsha is the f really fun, like, prankster kind of girl, like the class clown. She just always has a good time, um, and I just feel like she's just full of personality. And so to bring her into Life is Strange, like, there'd be none of this wishy-washy bullshit. She'd just be like, she'd be kind of a little bit more like Chloe and just like not caring about things and just like going for it and causing trouble. And I think it would be a lot more fun. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was a very good question, Megs. Thanks for seeing it, sending it in. Um, so one more question. This is from Groon. And he said, with the Witcher series coming to Netflix, which game series would you like to see take the Netflix route? I mean, once again, easy answer here. Give me a Waluigi life, life in... Life as Waluigi. Um, what's funny no, is, I... what's funny is, like your answer is the same as you just had. My answer would be butterfly soup. The same thing I oh. just said. We should have planned these questions out better to realize that our answers were going to be the same. Um, um, in all seriousness, I do think an Overwatch Netflix series. That's that was going to be... be my other answer. We are so oh, insane, yeah, no. Cody. Oh my god, we just have oh, the same mind. That'd be amazing. Uh, a Halo Netflix series would be great. Well, we're already I'm getting a getting... Halo Showtime I guess, series. But it's yeah, difference. Showtime. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that one. That'd be fine. Um, 
I wouldn't mind like a Destiny Netflix show. That'd be okay. Kind of like you know, like explaining the beginning of the Traveler and stuff, like where it came from, like life after the Traveler showed up, like yeah. stuff like that. You know, that'd be kind of interesting. So yeah, but you were gonna do Butterfly Sloop. Sloop. Butterfly Sloop. Sloop. Um, Butterfly Sloop? Soup. Yeah, because that would just be like like a teen comedy, um, probably like a thirty minute sitcom type thing, and just like their their hijinks and their antics. And I find I, that'd be very amusing, but but like seriously, I was like all in for the Overwatch thing because I mean it could. I don't think we it didn't say it had to be live action. It could still be animated. Um, yeah. They do such a good job with their animated shorts to just have like a series of that telling telling stories yeah. from the Overwatch world. <laughs> oh my god! I swear to God that gnat just flew up my nose. This is okay. <laughs> it's okay now. It lives there now. Whew, that was it, it. Went back out. It didn't like stay there, but that was. Oh goodness, that was that was horrible. Um, so, I I guess that's probably a good place to to end this show. I think I think Fine. we've covered everything. Um, the gnat is telling me to move along. So, uh, so yeah, uh, if uh, if you guys are enjoying the show, we would love for you to go to iTunes and leave us a review there. That helps uh, people find the show. We'd appreciate it. We love getting your listener questions, so you can write us at contact at geekheartgames.com. We're on Facebook and Twitter at Geek Heart Games. We've got live streams at twitch.tv slash geekheartgames, and then you can watch our videos at geekheartgames.com slash YouTube. And we're going to have some more Resident Evil 5 videos going up soon. We're having a lot of fun playing that game, so I'm very excited that, that Cody's enjoying it. Um... Oh yeah, if you if you want to join our Discord server, that's at geekartgames.com slash Discord. And I mean you just missed out this week we had an epic GIF battle where, you know, I don't I don't remember how it started. I don't know what the rules were. I don't understand how the judging so, went. Cody judged it and had some just random numbers thrown out to determine a winner. Okay. These I are didn't... not random numbers. I don't. I didn't understand what the numbers meant. Um, so the gift battle started because I complimented our your friend Mike's gift skills. He's everyone's and... friend, I would say now. Okay, good point. Is he's winning? He's winning my heart. Like he is. He's a master at um, gifts. And Melissa Megan from Fucking Comics was like, "Hey, I'm also a pretty good gifter." They started linking some gifts, and I went, "Gift battle, let's go." Um, now, some would say. You should have multiple judges for a gift battle, but as I am the king ruler of the Discord, my like saying goes. So how do you know I'm not the king ruler? Numbers. I could be the king. Was... You could be the queen. I mean, that... I mean, just why can't I be both? Because like I want some power as well. Just saying. We'll talk we about it. Discuss uh, it later. Okay. So the way I do this is, if you link a gif and I like it, you got a point. So Melissa linked game of thrones gifts instant point mike though came back with some lord of the rings instant point um i forget what the other one was but he just started linking some gifts left and right that i liked so he got the points so but melissa she was she was pulling ahead so i don't know at the end i just i i missed some of it and i came back and you had like 4-6, 4-7, 3-8, Four dash six, four dash seven, three dash eight, was, and then you're like, Mike's the winner, and I was like, I don't know what those numbers mean. I was <laughs> hyping it up, pretending that there were multiple judges, but really, like, one of those was my actual one, where I went through and counted everything. Because I took the time, I went back and was like, okay, let's count up these gifts. <laughs> um, who gets points? So sometimes you make these jokes that like nobody else understands. But I do, and as king queen <laughs> ruler of the Discord, so okay. All right. So anyway, if you want to see some fun gifts, whatever, come come join us. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you want to support us by uh, buying a shirt and and wearing wearing us on your body, uh, we would appreciate that too. That's at geekheartgames.com slash shirts. Uh, we just want to be close to your heart. So, <laughs> Cody, where can they find you? I'm at comic book Cody. And I'm at S-K-S-U-V-A-K. So thank you again, everyone who's tuned in. Cody, take it away. We're just two geeks who heart games. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. 
I survived. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> So, like, when I worked at Raising Canes, like, we would make coleslaw in the morning sometimes, and they were like, hey, if this gets open, like, we have to use it all. You can't, like, close it up and then put it back in later. Uh, so, I feel like coleslaw is like a, hey, it's open, you eat it, you don't save it for later, or else you're going to get real sick. But that's only if it's been, like, sitting out. Like, if it's been refrigerated. I mean, it was... You were at this restaurant for how long? Like and it a, just sat on that plate. Like an hour. Okay. It's, it's out for an hour. How long does it take you to get home from this restaurant? Like 10 minutes. Okay, so let's like factor in that. So like, it was out and about for a while, and then you just put it back in the fridge, and I feel like it's a, it's a no-go. Coleslaw's weird. Well, I guess we're going to find out the hard way, like yeah, we like to do. So, so you, if I have to run off in the middle of the podcast, <laughs> we'll know why. I'll fill, I'll fill the air. This, <laughs> this ray of sunshine is just really fucking hitting me. Like, I feel like I'm glowing a little bit from it. But I mean, It's your it's halo. Heaven's shining down on you. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing this. I, I don't know either. It's very weird. It's weird. Never done it before. Um, but yeah. Can you hear the guy mowing? No. Okay. I just heard it. I got real pissed off. <laughs> Did you hear it? I just farted really loud? No. <laughs> I didn't really. I was just kidding. Okay, I was like, hmm, okay. All right, then, Sam. This, really micro this microphone picks up everything. I guarantee you would hear it. I'm pretty sure I would have heard that. <laughs>